I got a referral from uh, the primary care physician uh, regarding his uh, condition uh, that he's been having uh, several months uh, before I saw him, um, which, uh, as he stated, uh, been complaining of uh, uh, severe leg pain, cramps, uh, numbness and tingling. And um, then the family also noticed that uh, he's getting uh, worse regarding his memory and focusing and concentration, forgetting things. And sometimes he's talking even uh, to people they don't exist. Uh, and uh, they have a daughter in uh, um, Charlotte, North Carolina. And um, the wife stated that uh, he was talking to her uh, in the kitchen and she's not there. So uh, they were very worried about his mental status, also about his uh, lower extremity pain and cramps that he never had before. Um, so that's why they referred him uh, to our clinic for further evaluation and treatment. This uh, entity is really a very interesting case, very interesting disorder. It's a rare disorder. It's an autoimmune disorder. Uh, Isaac syndrome uh, and Marvin syndrome uh, are uh, autoimmune disorders, antibodies against uh, uh, volume uh, against the uh, uh, potassium channel uh, antibodies. Uh, the voltage gated uh, uh, potassium channels in our central nervous system um, they are attacked by uh, our auto our own antibodies. We call them auto antibodies, which are uh, produced from the immune system, and those uh, channels and the voltage. Uh, gated potassium channels are very important uh, in the nerve function, centrally and peripherally. Um, so with Isaac syndrome, uh, which is mainly uh, the leg pain, the leg cramps, the neuromyotonia that you mentioned, which is the muscle quivering and twitching and the cramps, and we have a characteristic uh, finding that we can see this neuromyotonia on the EMG, which is a needle exam, where you put a small needle in the muscle and record the action potential and the motor units of the, uh, of the muscle fiber and see these fast firing action potentials, we call them neuromyotonia. The patient, you would have a lot of, facial, a lot of muscle twitching, um, fibrillation, and quivering. So we call it neuromyotonia. This is one of the features, and there is more features of the disorder, and more also uh, uh, signs and symptoms that sometimes patients, they cannot tell the physician about because they have hallucinations, they have confusion, they have memory loss, and you need a family member who would really very observant to tell you the patient has other symptoms like insomnia, they don't sleep well, they stay awake most of the night, they have fatigue during the day because they don't sleep well. Also, they have fatigue because of the muscle pain and the muscle cramps. The other thing is the excessive uh, uh, salivation and uh, hyperhidrosis, so they have uh, also uh, autonomic uh, dysfunction of the autonomic nervous system. And the central nervous system also has separate group of size symptoms for this disorder, where they have, as I said, amnesia, confusion, um, hallucinations. Rarely they could have um, seizures, um, but it is a very uncommon uh, finding with this uh, disorder. Our central nervous system control, of course, our emotions, our also uh, muscles. So he presented with, um, you know, both symptoms, central nervous system symptoms and peripheral nervous system symptoms. Central nervous system, we mean the brain and the spinal cord. Anything related to that is the central nervous system. The peripheral nervous system, anything from the anterior horn cells from the spinal cord down to the muscles. So we call that the peripheral nervous system. With his symptoms regarding the central nervous system, those channels, the potassium channels, are everywhere in the nerves. It's like the sodium channels. Sodium and potassium channels, they are in the cell membrane of the neurons where they control our movements in the hands, in the legs, and also they fire to stimulate the nerve, to stimulate certain area in the brain. So the motor function, the sensory function, our thinking, our planning, our memory, also is controlled by neurons or the nerves. So in the brain, we call them neurons. And in the peripheral nervous system, these nerves, they have these sodium and potassium channels 
where are they responsible for the action potential. So if there is any dysfunction in the potassium channels, as in this disorder, they would be firing randomly. And then you would have a lot of muscle twitching, a lot of fibrillation and cramps. For the brain, they attack those channels we are more heavily uh, abundant in the thalamus, which is responsible for our sleep cycle and sleep um, hygiene that we go to bed certain time of the day, at night, we wake up at certain time in the morning. So this is controlled by the thalamus. So that's why when they have dysfunction of those channels, the potassium channels, they have disturbance of their sleep. And also located in other area in the brain, the brain which is called the hippocampus, which is in the temporal lobe. This area also is very involved in our memory and remembering things, try to learn new things and so forth. So if you have dysfunction in the hippocampus, you would have in the hippocampus you would have amnesia, confusion, and memory loss. She was really great, uh, very helpful. I mean, she answered all these detailed questions. Uh, she's very observant. Uh, I never gave up, and she never gave up. Uh, so we kept thinking, and we kept doing uh, all the blood tests and the workup, try to find out, uh, putting all these pieces together. Uh, you know, when you find someone with just memory problem and confusion, you know, you don't want to diagnose with this patient with dementia or Alzheimer's disease, which he doesn't have. Uh, at the same time, if someone has only just leg cramps or numbness, you wouldn't diagnose him with just peripheral neuropathy and forgetting other signs and symptoms that he has. But with the detailed history, and she is very, really supportive, she's very caring, she gave him excellent care. And she was really very thorough, telling me his progress, telling me his worsening, uh, even minor things like, you know, if I want to ask about his sleeping time, how many hours he gets sleep, you know, if he has hyperhidrosis, she would be able to tell me all these detailed symptoms. And this is very helpful to me to know all the signs and symptoms and put them together, do the workup, do EMG, nerve conduction study to look at the other supportive uh, signs for this rare disorder that you finally um, think about it after all, you know, this way of thinking, is it really just related to the central nervous system? Is it to the peripheral nervous system or both together? And then you need to think which disorders could affect the central and peripheral nervous system at the same time. This disorder, it is rare. It is an autoimmune disorder. And as I said, it is a paraneoplastic disorder, which means the immune system starts to producing antibodies against the voltage-gated potassium channels randomly. But they noticed that patients with history of cancer, like colon cancer, prostate cancer, which Mr. Crawford had in the past, he had previous prostate surgery, and patients with thymoma, which is... Uh, mass and the tumor in the thymus gland, they have higher risk of having autoimmune disorders and paraneoplastic disorders in the future. So with his history and his wife very helpful to tell me all about his detailed history, at that stage when I saw him, he did not remember all these things that happened to him. So if you ask him about the medical history, about the surgical history that he had in the past, he would not be able to tell you. He was very confused. He was very demented and able to remember even his family members. So at that time, we figure out that, you know, it is related to that disorder and we sent for the antibodies and they were positive. One of the workup, because uh, initially he was admitted to the hospital and um, they were concerned about encephalitis, uh, which is an infection in the central nervous system, which could present also with confusion. And that's also an emergency. So someone with... Uh, alter mental status that comes suddenly, acutely, you should rule out, you know, also serious uh, illnesses. So when he was in the hospital, we know this is acute and this is sudden. He was doing fine before he was admitted to the hospital, as his wife stated, but he has this alter mental status that could be due to encephalitis or meningoencephalitis. And the best way to diagnose it is to do the lumbar puncture and look for any kind of infectious process going on. And this can be treated in a different way than treating this syndrome and this disorder 
where, we, where he had the antibodies against the voltage-gated uh, uh, potassium channels. Also, the other benefit of the lumbar puncture that we um, also did uh, in the hospital is to look for other uh, antibodies and to look for also other uh, uh, autoimmune disorders um, in the CSF uh, fluid. Uh, also, we did more blood work while he's in the hospital to see if there is other mimics, you know, for this altered mental status. But, you know, all the workup that we did came back negative for encephalitis and meningitis. Was this just a, basically a, a case of just continued process of elimination until you narrowed it down to what it just had to be? Well, honestly, if you get really, um, because it is a rare disorder, uh, if you don't get the detailed history and if you don't think about the disorder, you will never do the workup. Uh, honestly, uh, first when he start having the severe pain, the numbness, the tingling, as any neurologist, you would think this is only just pure neuropathy, which is one manifestation of the disorder. But when you see the patient have more symptoms and you listen to the family and listen to the patient, and take thorough history and do thorough exam, you would know this patient has more signs and more symptoms than only just neuropathy. Simple neuropathy would not make you have confusion, hallucination, altered mental status. At the same time, this is acutely. So there is something going acutely, not something really gradual or progressive or any of those neurodegenerative disorder like let's say dementia, Alzheimer, other neurodegenerative disorder. This is more acutely. So if you think about it together, you do a thorough exam, you find some signs supportive of your thinking, and you order the test, the test comes back positive with antibodies against the potassium channels. And also the other leading thing in this case is when we do the EMG exam, you see the myokymia, which are very characteristic for also this disorder. You see the rapid firing of the motor units when you check the single fiber um, uh, with the needle exam, the concentric needle, you would think about this disorder. So that was very helpful also to uh, confirm the diagnosis. He said that, uh, or his wife, uh, Joyce, said that the lumbar puncture samples and things were sent to Mayo Clinic in, in Minnesota. How did you know to send them up there? Was it just some little... Mayo Clinic is a great institute. They have a great lab. So all the rare antibodies in uh, neurology, uh, we try uh, to send them to the Mayo Clinic because they have an extensive panel there they check for. Uh, of course, there is other places but I request to send them to the Mayo Clinic uh, to look for these antibodies, and they do really extensive uh, search for these rare antibodies. How surprised were you to find in your first couple months here in this area such a rare condition? Honestly, I'm very pleased and excited that I got to help Mr. Crawford because you couldn't imagine how um, stressed they were. Are. I mean, the family, the uh, wife, uh, they were of course like all of us, you know, a family member who is very smart, intelligent, uh, suddenly start having these symptoms. Um, it, is, it is overwhelming. It is very stressful for the family. So I did everything I could to help Mr. Crawford and help his family and try to do everything possible to diagnose him because we cannot know the prognosis if we, if we don't find that diagnosis. So we did everything possible to do the workup, to get the diagnosis, and then finally, you know, give them the prognosis and help them how things would go. And help also with the treatment. If you don't know the diagnosis, you will not be able to know the treatment and the long-term prognosis. So I was really very thrilled, very excited, very happy, because I got to help a person who's healthy, you know, doing very well, smart, intelligent, start having all these symptoms, you know, very concerning. He was really going downhill with his memory, with his uh, motor strength. And finally, we knew, knew that when we knew the diagnosis, we got to help him and make him feel better. Tell me about how you treated it. What, what, what was the course of action uh, when you knew what it was? How did you decide what to do? 
Of course, with all these symptoms, uh, because it is an autoimmune disorder, so there's different uh, uh, therapies for this kind of disorder, uh, mainly the plasma pheresis, uh, which is a mechanism where you uh, wash up the antibodies from the system and get rid of them. The other um, modality is the IVIG, intravenous immunoglobulins, which are antibodies against those antibodies in our system. So they attack them and they block their function from attacking the potassium channels. And that's what uh, Mr. Crawford had, had IVIG, intravenous immunoglobulins. And on top of that is physical therapy. So physical therapy is very important to keep his strength, his function, and doesn't lose the muscle strength and the size of his muscles so he didn't have atrophy or weakness. Also, there is other immune uh, modulators that we can use to suppress the immune system because the immune system is the main culprit for these antibodies like uh, prednisone or steroids and other uh, immune modulator that we can use to suppress the immune system and decrease the production of these antibodies. The prognosis is variable. Uh, some patients, they have it like a chronic uh, disorder. Some, it's like a monophasic stage and they, they do fine. And some, they have the relapsing, remitting course. Um, so they improve, it could come back again and you treat them. But the good thing is most of them, they do well with therapy, with physical therapy. And if their symptoms recur, at least you know the diagnosis and know how to treat them right away. So far, as he responded, he's responded extremely well because I've gone and watched him walk, but uh, no, no, no sign of recurrence yet? Or? So far, I've seen him again in the clinic after treatment, uh, and he did very well regarding his cognition. Now, he remember all his family. Um, he, you can carry a normal conversation with him. Um, he has no hallucinations anymore. His sleeping is much better. Uh, all the autonomic uh, symptoms like uh, hyperhidrosis, excessive salivation, it went away. Uh, his gait, as you said, and his uh, muscle cramps and pain improved. Um, he recovered, as his wife stated, 95% of his muscle strength and his gait um, comparing before therapy. So therapy helped him a lot. And as I said, I was so pleased to see the progression and the improvement in his case to 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 the best. I mean, uh, I mean, I I gave him a hug honestly in my clinic, and I thank him because he was very patient while doing physical therapy. He did a great job. He never gave up. His wife also, she never gave up. She was very also patient, and she was very, as I said, thorough and supportive, and that helps. And that helps. He had a great family. I was pleased. To, to help him, please, to take care of his condition and make him feel better. And it is my job. So I feel really uh, very proud to um, diagnose him with this rare disorder. At the same time, see the progress and the improvement. Um, where did he have his physical therapy? Did he do that in your office or was it at, at, at No, no, he had uh, Grace uh, Ridge and they did a great job with him regarding physical therapy. And they were also uh, very persistent with him and they gave him physical therapy on daily basis several times a day uh, to get his muscle strength, get rid of the spasm and the pain that he had. So I wanna also thank them for their great job, for all the work they did with him. And that is very important in his case and patients with muscle pain and cramps and weakness. It's very important to have physical therapy and it's important not only just to improve the function of the muscle, but also to decrease the severity of the symptoms and prevent loss of muscle size or have what we call in neurology atrophy, muscle atrophy, or the loss of muscle size. Um, they mentioned in their interview, a, uh, I guess a muscular neurologist in Charlotte that, that had some input. Uh, who was that? You know? Exactly. Uh, I mean, because the family were also very stressed and concerned, and I agree with them, and they have a daughter who lives in Charlotte, and they suggested um, on uh, Mr. Crawford that we will uh, take you for a second opinion, and maybe we get the diagnosis, the treatment. At that time, we were in the process of the workup, 
and you know he went there with his wife and his daughter and the same thing i mean he had a complete workup and he stayed there uh, at the hospital and he was assessed by a group of neurologists there and uh, the end they sent me a report and miss um, crawford she came and uh, she told me uh, they agree with you and they uh, have nothing to add and they want us to follow uh, up with you you did extensive workup you did a great job uh, just follow up with blue rate neurology and um, we have nothing to offer and at the same time at that time we are still in the process of workup and a uh, few a uh, few weeks later uh, of his visit to charlotte we find the diagnosis and we diagnose him with this rare condition and they were very pleased and i was also happy the family that you know when they hear a second opinion that makes them sometimes feel better that they are in safe hands they at least have a neurologist who know what he's doing or taking care of the problem. So I'm very pleased because in both ways you could help and please the family. And you know, this family is very stressed. This family has a sick, you know, family member who was, as I said, completely fine and try to find out what's the diagnosis. So I'm very pleased that uh, I got to, uh, you know, evaluate him and diagnose him and treat him.